Because at any time he knows anything from Taiwan, as far as the Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Elijah Sinat Adeoju Ojibutu, to give us a short remarks. Your Excellency. <laughs> Everybody was coming up and telling their names. 
but he wanted to know what led to it. These people had not seen each other for about 8 to 10 years. So they said, we can't continue meeting. I know your faith, but I don't remember him. So introduce yourselves now. Let's know each other. First person stood up and said, another one got up. He said, my name is Inka Adewale Unilori. When he came to my friend's town to stand, he has been hearing you, 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 you all over. He also stood up, my name is Deko Abumba, or you need petrol job. So if you all go to uni learning, you are a Yubo boy. You know, you need petrol. <laughs> Sometimes when people pray, pray, the things that we do, they shall follow us in abundance. Some people cannot afford to answer that prayer in their affirmative room. Because at a, a public uh, hospital recently, many men were lined up. Their wives were in the labor room. The first one came out. Ah, no, 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 no. Your wife has just delivered two places. Three places. Ah, you say, what is this? I walk in three pound milk. Three places. Okay. The next one. The state, which is organized by the Office of the Deputy Governor in collaboration with the Department of Public Enterprises Management Studies of the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, Aston. I am equally delighted by the choice of the theme of the seminar, which is commercialization as an effective instrument for efficient performance. I am made to understand that the objectives of the seminar include, among other things, the acquisition of sound knowledge and skills required for the efficient application of the current policy guidelines, regulations, and strategies relating to the commercialization and reform of public enterprises towards improved performance in the economy and the development process. I am further informed that the seminar is tailored to suit the unique needs of the chairman, of the chairman and chief executives of four economic enterprises and public utilities, as well as special development project-oriented agencies and bodies, charged with World Bank assisted projects such as the Lagos State Water Corporation, the Lagos State Agricultural Development Project, and the Rating and Valuation Office. I wish to commend your efforts at organizing this kind of seminar, which is aimed at sensitizing the need for efficient performance in a deregulated economy given the privatization and commercialization policy direction of government. This seminar could not have come at a better time. The team is not only topical, but most relevant, particularly when considering the general background of the socio-political and economic changes which are taking place not only in Lagos State, but throughout Nigeria as a whole. There is no doubt that these changes have significant effects on the public enterprises. It is these effects that are inevitably reshaping the environment of the public enterprises in Nigeria as a whole. There is therefore the need now to accept the reality of the situation and move along with the tidal wave. The role of the boards in Lagos State must therefore shift from that of merely appointing and disciplining of key management staff of the enterprises to that of creating new directions for more functional enterprise management 
and revenue generation. Along with this is the requirement for boards of directors to provide the enabling environment for a reorientation of the enterprises in the context of the new enterprise environment in Nigeria. It is in realization of this that we have appointed on various boards competent professionals and people of proven integrity, not only to sustain the boards, but to strengthen them and make them more relevant. Also, given the present stage of the transition to civil rule program, concerns are already being expressed about the possibility of a return to the old style of official interference and excessive political interests in the management of public enterprises. These concerns are in fact legitimate, given the experiences of the past when public enterprises were seen merely as extensions of government departments with inevitable negative consequences for their performance. Today, the new environment in the Nigerian public enterprises requires that these consequences be avoided at all costs. There is no sense whatsoever for government to allow for these consequences after the painstaking effort at commercializing or privatizing most of these enterprises. It is, however, a matter of concern that the performance of most parastatals, utility boards, and government-owned companies, not only in Lagos State, but also in the country as a whole, have not been the success story often recorded by many comparable private sector organizations. There is a rather curious irony in the realization that while most private sector organizations declare profits annually, their government-owned counterparts find it increasingly difficult to remain afloat. The current economic realities of the situation in this state have made it imperative that government can no longer play the role of Father Christmas in all sectors of human endeavor since its limited resources have to be prudently managed to provide the essentials of life rather than dissipate in support of unwilling to mature industries. As far as this administration is concerned, the era of bloated government is over. Government's involvement in commercial ventures should only be limited to the attainment of specific objectives in the public interest. In the light of the foregoing, and if the public enterprises have to survive meaningfully, there is a great need for you as chairmen, board members, and chief executives of government-owned companies to undertake considerable work in diagnosing the problems of our public enterprises and developing appropriate institutional, legal, and operational arrangements to improve their efficiency. To be able to do this effectively, you must be properly groomed in the requirements and dynamics of, for successful organizational survival in the new dispensation. Similarly, if board members are not to dissipate their energies in unwholesome wranglings and if the privatization exercise is not to be misunderstood, misrepresented, misinterpreted, and resisted, it is imperative that the do's and don'ts of the exercise be made clear 
to those charged with the responsibility for ensuring the survival of the organizations. At this juncture, I wish to assure all the good people of Lagos State that while we continue to invest in strategic sectors to enhance our revenue generation capacity and to provide social services as well as stimulate growth in selected areas, we would not relent in our efforts at promoting entrepreneurship and private initiatives. As it is usually with the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, this tailor-made seminar is designed in such a way that participants would be in a position thereafter to put more emphasis on institutional and systems development and less on contract awards and petty squabbles. At the end of this seminar, you must shake off all negative attitudes which tend to see responsibility in the context of financial authority only. I have no doubt that you will find the seminar both thrilling and rewarding as all attempts would be made by the experienced and versatile presenters to proper solutions to problems that have been facing the organizations. Distinguished ladies. <laughs>
During that ceremony, you will recall, I mentioned that the second batch of the UDD Line Mass Transit Forces would be given out within six weeks from that date. The second batch of UDD Line Mass Transit Forces that we are commissioning today will therefore complement the existing transportation drive throughout the state. I have been reliably informed that the first batch of the UDD Line buses and other buses provided by different local governments are making positive impact on commuters throughout the state. I would like to use this opportunity to thank the transport unions and associations for doing a good job and for maintaining a healthy working relationship with this administration. It is this good relationship and cooperation existing between both parties that has made it possible for us to be here again this afternoon for this remarkable occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, the important role of urban transportation in our economy cannot be overemphasized. Lagos remains the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. The business operating in these centers are dependent on phone manpower that must be transported to and from work as quickly and as cheaply as possible. Good transportation network facilitates this movement and provides the means by which the products are distributed to the various selling points and consumers and also creates opportunities for enlightenment and social interaction. One of the contributory factors to the Lagos transportation problem is the high cost of transport operations. It is not surprising, therefore, that the total bus population in Lagos declined from 20,000 in 1983 to 10,000 in 1992, while the level of motorization fell from 37 to 14 vehicles per thousand population in Lagos State within the same period. These figures confirm that the citizens of Lagos State are facing ever-increasing commuting hardships. It is this need to ease the hardship of commuters that forms the basis of the concept for the Jubilee Line. The Jubilee Line is conceived as a form of assistance to the private transport operators in the state. In order to find meaningful solutions to the problems facing commuters in Lagos State, this administration has gone into this unique partnership with the private transporters. Moreover, under the present dispensation, the government is all out to ensure tremendous improvement in the management of transportation sector in the state. The 30 buses being handed over today is the second batch of a total of 1,000 mass transit vehicles to include mini buses and taxis which will be purchased by this administration on the Jubilee Line scheme. The net effect of handing over these vehicles to the private operators to run will not only be the community and quality standards, more importantly, this will strengthen the partnership between the private operators and the government in seeking a more befitting transportation system for Lagos State. However, let me add that this, at this juncture that the search for a better transportation system for Lagos State 
go beyond the Jubilee Line scheme. This administration has evolved a three-pronged attack on the transportation problem. I am happy to announce that the Jubilee Rail Line will be launched shortly. The Jubilee Rail Service is aimed at further reducing the hardship of commuters. It has also been concluded. This will help us move people from one end of Lagos, that is as far away as the Jew, to Ido and Ababa. On water transportation, this administration has set up a task force to look into the operation of the Lagos State Ferry Services Corporation with a view to improving its services. The task force has completed its assignment and its report and recommendations are being studied by the appropriate government agency. However, this administration aims at making full use of state waterways so as to properly integrate these with rail and road transport network in the state. This will be done through the construction of new jetties and terminals, the dredging of new routes, as well as the maintenance and repairs of existing ferry boats to make them more serviceable. Distinguished guests, our dear market women, market leaders, our dear party supporters, our friends in the SDP, my duty to look after you all. I have the honor and pleasure to hand over the keys of another 30 Jubilee Line Mass Transit buses the second batch to the transport unions and associations on behalf of the Lagos State Government and the entire citizens of the state. It is my hope that the operation of the Jubilee Line Mass Transit buses will be of service to all the citizens of the state. <coughs> I thank you for your presence today. We wish you every success in this great venture. Thank you very much. Chairman of local government, representative of uh, the business community, fellow transporters, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the members of the safety committee of other members of Lagos State All Transport Union Association Joint Transport Committee, I welcome you all to this important occasion. When on assuming office as the chief executive of Lagos State, Governor Michael Oteta announced his government intention to embark on measures aimed at alleviating the problem of transporters and commuters services. Most people felt it was a mere political propaganda. Who no know has known. As a man of honor, 
Saint Michael Otadala has lit up to expectation. With the launching of the first batch of Jubilee buses on Wednesday, 26th of August, today occasion is yet another manifestation of our dream come true. <laughs> Members of the various transport unions in Lagos State shall continue to be grateful to His Excellency for being the first, I say the first executive of the state to really tackle Lagos of Bank transfer problem in the right perspective. <laughs> This is a great feat which is commended to successful administration. Furthermore, sir, I will not mind who has the gun, but you have nearly succeeded where others failed. This is a great feat. Furthermore, the decision of the government to give all this money to private transporters, irrespective of their political affiliation, is equally commendable. <laughs> While commending the effort of both the state and local government council in Lagos State for embarking on measures aimed at elevating the problem of transporters and the commuters, it may be necessary to advise on the choice of vehicle. <laughs> Excellency, uh, a model of the 500 million uh, aperture and lighting complex. So I will now hand over to Mr. Kenke, who is uh, representing the builders of the uh, aperture complex. Mr. Kenke. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. So if I may, I will start over here, sir. Uh, Your Excellency, the uh, Lagos State Governor, sir, Michael Otedola, the uh, Secretary to the Lagos State Government, Professor Albert Sego, the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture and Cooperatives, Alati Rashid Barua, Lagos State Government, dignitaries present, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, honored by the kind invitation of His Excellency, the Lagos State Governor, to be here and privileged to perform this small ceremony today on behalf of my principals, Kate Fair of Germany. 
Kefed as contractors completed and commissioned the Lego State Abattoir almost 18 months ago. And we were happy that you were able to officially declare this most modern abattoir open on 15th of September this year, and we congratulate you half a day on this. The Kefed also the benefit of all of us living in Lego State. The KFED is grateful, or if possible, to overcome the many obstacles which had to be faced within the period of construction and completion. KFED assures the Lagos State Government under your leadership of its continuous goodwill and willingness to render assistance whenever needed. I hope will now be fulfilled as well. Uh, to commemorate the historical opening of the abattoir and Marriage. KFED has produced a scale model of the facility, which I have the pleasure in presenting today to His Excellency the Governor. I thank you all and pray that this important project of Lagos State will always be a shining example of the service of the state to the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can now receive it. Well, I saw you opening it. And <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you know you have here the uh, Agege motor, motor road with the main entrance into the facility with the sewage treatment. Uh, you may recall the place in front where we had the opening ceremony with the four uh, animal markets in its long projection over here and the two slaughter lines over here ending with the cooling facilities and here of course all the utilities, the fire brigade, the uh, uh, laundry, laundry and the byproduct plant etc. on this side and again on the way out the administration building at this end and not of course to be forgotten in its separate enclosure the uh, pig slaughtering at the end of the facility. And I do hope that it will function so well as we all dream it will be because we have left space for expansions. So uh, anything can be set up there by duplication or by uh, ram slaughtering, whatever should come up. You cannot exclude export facilities in the long run as well. I do wish that the project will succeed as planned. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, in receiving this masterpiece, which is very thoughtful of you, yeah. you have decided to present that even if we are not a uh, gay people, as long as we are here, we will be looking at this and remembering. Thank you very much, sir. As for the message that you brought, I have had the message. Thank you, Mr. Sir. I think that uh, the Honorable Commissioner for the Culture yes. was requested to go into the matter. Yes. The government of the state has not fulfilled its own obligation, its own side of the family. Yes, there was a request from the SNG asking for the papers and we have passed it to the commissioner's office. It must be in your office now. You sent um, <laughs> possibly today. But I remember you sent a request which you sent and we forward it. Yes. I'm most grateful. So Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we are amazed with uh, trying to see where we are housing. I think uh, temporarily the reception upstairs. Thank you.
So that we won't have to ask our benefactors to go and build us a house. Yes, we still do that. We yeah. we'll see next expansion, we will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Once again, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, okay. You have her phone number, I'm sure. Thank you. you can have the phone in her, so we we'll see okay. what the commissioner has done. Thank you. <laughs>
pilot car and a good doctor. If not, we run into a problem. Mm. <laughs> Who are you representing? Legacy. Legacy. <laughs> I'm seeing the. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing. Say, I'm seeing is uh, what? Fifty. Fifty something. Eh? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, if you can, I'm booking. Now, in a Kaduna. Come on, lady. Come on, lady. Assembly. Okay. Now, if you do that so well, why can't you look after just material things? Therefore, we leave this to your hands to give to the honorable gentlemen and women. <laughs> who have been visiting with us and we extremely delighted to have them in our territory. We wish them well. We wish them God's traveling messes as they go around the other states they are visiting and they go with the good wishes of the government and therefore of the labor state. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. May I now invite Honorable Mustafa Ibrahim from Niger State to so please move the vote of thanks. Of uh, Lagos State, uh, his cabinet, uh, distinguished senators, honorable members, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish on behalf of all the members of our delegation 
as well as the CDS official to express our gratitude and appreciation for the well, uh, wonderful welcome we have received from the government of Lagos State. Uh, we are quite aware that we have been here since morning and we have seen the good gestures right from the moment we entered into the estate. Uh, they have changed, they have successfully uh, given us uh, an outrider who saw us through the traffic jam. We have uh, been well received by the deputy governor during the afternoon uh, meeting. We have gone to other places and where we have been entertained quite well and uh, we have marvelous international trade fair. To think it has been one full year during which a lot of changes have taken place in the country politically and more importantly economically. There is no doubt that some of these changes will be reflected in this fair in the next couple of days as the Lagos International Trade Fair has been regarded as an index of our economic activities. We have lined up this morning a few speeches and a cultural display lined up for your entertainment and information. This will be leading up to the opening address by the President, of course, which will be delivered by the Governor himself. And now to start the ball rolling, here is our Chief Host, the President. Your Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Sir Michael Pedola, representing the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Ibrahim Dalamoski Babangida, members of the Armed Forces Ruling Council, if any of them is present, members of the National Council of State, if any, Your Excellency, Ambassadors and High Commissioners of Foreign Missions in Nigeria, Honorable Commissioner, Your Royal Highnesses, my representatives of international organizations, fellow officers, Council members and members of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, officers and members of the State Chambers of Commerce, distinguished exhibitors, all invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I refer to two categories of people I expected would be present, and I said, if any. You may wonder why I said that. It is because we had a, a message from His Excellency, Mr. President, Mr. President, that uh, he was planning to come, but uh, an emergency in the nature of national assignment presented him from court. And so those members, two categories I mentioned, were and inevitably tired of feeling. But we are here this morning to have the President of the Governor of Labor State, Mr. Michael, to be with us. He will have been here in any case, in full right at our land of our daughter. But uh, the position is not necessarily by the fact that he is just meant to be present. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all most warmly to the opening ceremony of the 12th Lagos International Trade Fair. We feel greatly honored and privileged to be able to uh, our governor, who is representing.
representing the President. I have said before, the President cannot be here. And so, we would have not to have him, but as God will have him, he has him. But the man representing him is a man who is very close to our heart. And uh, for this, I think we will give uh, the first, uh, the governor, a round of applause. We are also highly gratified by the presence here this morning of the theme of public and private sector fascinations, each of whom deserves special recognition, but for time constraint. I want to recognize particularly those Director General and top government functionaries, a member of the Diplo uh, Diplomatic Corps, traditional rulers, leaders of organized private sector, chief executive of corporate bodies, and other eminent guests. To all of you, I say a happy welcome to this opening ceremony, and thank you most sincerely for honoring our invitation. The two ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to acknowledge to acknowledge the unique and pragmatic style of the leadership of the president since their two office thirty years ago. The socio-economic, political, and political landscape of Nigeria has experienced fundamental changes. While the country's structure in continental and global affairs has been enhanced. Mr. Governor, sir, I wish to say with all emphasis that we stand on the threshold of the Third Republic. It is here that the present administration has achieved some success in ongoing transition to democratic leadership. It is this connection that we want to note the commitment of the administration to hand over the master of leadership to a democratically elected civilian government which remains constituent. The three ladies and gentlemen, the theme of the twelve Lagos International that is, promotion of non-oil exports for economic development was carefully chosen to reflect, to reflect the crying need to diversify the economic base of the country, which is a major plan of the ongoing structural adjustment program of this administration. Both by general uh, uh, but good to mama. No, no. He then authorized, the president authorized the, the Minister for Trade and Industry to communicate this decision to us. And it was in writing that the 20 million naira was also reconfirmed. I regret to say that in this moment we have not got this money. <laughs> I have hoped that the President personally will be here holding in hand our chair. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it. We are still waiting in seven days because we have uh, been structuring our project on this seat allowance that we promised us. It is not worthy that Casino, Chamber of Commerce, Every Mutual of Commerce has received 50 million, 25 million respectively, while the 20 million for Lagos is still not paid. I hope the Mr. President, you are Mr. President, in all these special details. Mr. Governor, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by once again welcoming you very happy 
first Lagos International Trade Fair. I wish all of you prosperity and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce. I'm sure that um, the PR officer to one of your subcommittees, Ms. Labate Adebi, will be glad to advise you on how to get that check from, from Mr. President. He's a member of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. And they know how to get money off Mr. President. And Michael Theodora, who is here representing Mr. President, who is incidentally also the patron of Nassim. We acknowledge here today your a perception of the dominant role which the Chamber Movement would make in the economic development of this country, as well as the confidence which the President has made, so as to ensure sustainable economic growth and national self-reliance. In this drive, it has become, it has come to be acknowledged that the extensive reliance on a single commodity sector of the economy for the generation of the national wealth is both unwise and unfeasible. It has become, it has been discovered, and our own national experience is highly instructive in this regard that even slight problems of production or a downturn in the prices of such single commodities would mean not only serious reversals in government budgeted expenditure, but would also result in severe losses in both the public and private investments. No doubt, the promotion of stable national development and the pursuit of long-term economic objectives can hardly be realized under such a monocultural economic system. To fora such as this, I take it that the president would have assumed that we have got this money. Please kindly let me know. Somebody down here has not received this money. Austrian uh, supplier of 
bollocks. And they are also cooperating with companies in Nigeria and Nigerian venue to